listen, neither of us are going to like who I am by the end of this. Hello, my name is Haley Whipjack. You can call me Haley Whipjack. You can call me Haley. You can call me Whipjack. You can honestly call me whatever you like as long as you're cool about it. So we're playing a game. I'm playing a game. I'm playing by myself, but you can play along at home. And in fact, I want you to. I fully expect all of the comments to be about all the wrong decisions I made. And honestly, I can't wait. You read the title. You know vaguely what we're doing. We are playing a game that I don't want to. <laughs> I feel like if I say the name of this game as many times as this format warrants, I'll get in trouble somehow. The good news is I have a lot of really dumb versions of the usual name that I can use instead. So today I'm going to be playing Snog Snatch Send Away. I'll be playing Smash Forever Smash and Forever Pass. I'm going to be playing Make Out Murder and Matrimony with 136 monsters from the Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition monster manual. So now you're thinking, oh cool, there's 136 monsters in the monster manual? No. Um, <laughs> the absolute first thing that needs to happen here is talk about ground rules and ethics. The Harkness test, so named after the character Jack Harkness from the rebooted Doctor Who, who's one of the best characters in the whole show I love her very much, is well known for canoodling with all sorts of alien species. But the man also has ethics and like a code. He's not gonna just get down with anything. That's a recipe for disaster. The Harkness test implores that anything that you eh, with needs to fit into a few different categories. That thing needs to one, have human intelligence or greater than human intelligence. Two, be of an adult age for its species. And three, be able to communicate because consent is more than key. Right, so you get that they can't be like a rock or a bird. They can't be a baby, you know? And we will be abiding by the Harkness test today. There will not, there will be no babies on the list. When you're transferring those rules to D&D &D creatures, it gets a little bit tricky because uh, human intelligence, for example, humans in D&D &D can have intelligence of all kinds of numbers. There's not like this number's human and this number's not. That's not really how it works. And then there's languages. Uh, there's a million of them. Some creatures can only understand languages but can't communicate. Sometimes they only speak a language very specific to their species. Ah, it's weird. So what I did was comb through the Monster Manual, the Husband Handbook, the Waifu Catalog, and I selected every monster that's not explicitly young or baby that can understand at least one language. If they have the capacity for language and I'm in a world where they exist, I can cast magic about it and we can talk, okay? Relationships don't work without the determination to make them work, okay? I'll say right now, I didn't grab every single monster because quite frankly, I got a little bored. There's only a couple of dragons and a couple of giants and not all the devils and demons because I got bored, okay? And also, the amount of real physical work and arts and crafts that I put into this, I think 136 is enough. Uh, but we have a long time ahead of us to get familiar with my nutty buddy box full of friends. First, a brief interlude. The rise in the trend of Smasher Pass and the fall in trend of Rail Ring Rid is indicative of society's inherent cowardice. In this essay, I will. Smasher Pass, compared to this, it's boring, okay? It's boring. What, you have total agency over every single choice? You can just decide for each one. You're gonna say yes or no, that's boring. But this, this, snuggle, struggle, lifelong double. You have to make the hard calls. I guarantee that inside this box are things that are going to make me regret this entire concept. That's the point. And at many points, you are going to disagree with my decisions. And so will I. But again, that's okay. That's the point. Uh, and also, if you've done the math, you may have noticed that 136 does not evenly divide by three. And I only have three categories. There's going to be one left over. That's for me. After however long this takes, after whoever I become, by the end of it, that one left over, I get to choose full agency where they go. And it's gonna feel good. I don't know how long this is going to take. I have zero concept over how long this video is going to be. You can see, you know, you know what you're getting into. I do not. How many groups of three is that actually? It's 45. They're also not all gonna fit on this whiteboard. And what am I gonna do about that? We'll find out together. <laughs> What if you just didn't put them on a whiteboard? Boring. Boring. It's like science. 
That's what I'm saying. It's um, it's science. Probably. <laughs> I feel like that's the end of the sort of ground rules and expectations that I need to set. And the only thing to do now is get into it. I'm procrastinating a little bit. If at some point during the breakdown that this will inevitably become, you think you want to see more hot content from me in the future, please subscribe. I would love for this to be something I can do more often. And I guess that's about all the procrastinating I can do. So let's get into it. Honestly, I keep remembering that there's no owl bear in here and then kind of wondering like, what's the point? Just assume for all intents and purposes, any creatures that I'm marrying, we have a pet owl bear at home. Okay? I want that established in the canon. I'll, uh, I'll give you a peek. There, there, there they all are. I have been mixing them around a lot. They initially started in alphabetical order, like order they show up in the monster manual. That was at step one. And there's been like six steps to get to, get to here. So you and I have an equal idea of what order these things are in. I can't rig myself is what I'm saying. There's no way to give myself easy answers. If we stumble across some easy answers, good. If we don't, that's life, baby. I haven't looked yet. Our first trio is Seder, Vine Blight, Cyclops. Oh, Jesus. All right, Seder, Vine Blight, Cyclops. Fuck, Mary kill. I said it. There, I said it. I said it. It's hard right away. Okay. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill the Vine Blight, okay? I'm sure he's a perfectly nice guy, but I really don't need just like a shambling, undead bit of plant matter in my home. Think of the owl bear, you know? So who do we hit and quit? Seder. Seder. Because the thing about satyrs, right, is they're just like, they're just mischievous little guys. And I feel like that could be fun, like for a little bit, which leaves me marrying the Cyclops um, by process of elimination, which is maybe not the healthiest foundation to a relationship, but I feel like it's something we'll be seeing a lot of tonight, so. Set number two. We have a Drider, an Incubus, and a Water Weird. So, now, now the instinct, right, is with the Incubus up in, up in Snuggle because that's like his whole thing. That's a, I think that's a bad idea. I think that's a very bad idea because it is his whole thing, but it's his whole thing because you die at the end of that. And I, that's not really what I'm going for, but I don't know if the Drider would be any nicer to me. I almost think she wouldn't. <laughs> Maybe I choose who we forever pass on first. I'm gonna kill the Incubus because I feel like kind of no matter what, there's no way that we get like a healthy foundation for a relationship and also I don't want to die. So we'll, we'll, we'll put him down here. Okay, wait, so now what? <laughs> uh, I'll marry the Drider. Do you get the picture by the way? It's like a, like a heart with a ring on it, like for marriage. And you know, I, it, it doesn't make sense, but it will, it will, what a fun story to tell, right? Ma imagine singing about that one in the tavern, huh? This is gonna take forever. That was two. I have 45. We've got a cloaker, a Garistro, and I dropped him. Sorry, cloaker, Garistro, and we're a tiger. So kind of immediately we have a problem here, and it's that they are the clear answer for two of the categories. I should say before I forget to, and this might add to the overall effect. Some of these printed out beautifully. They look wonderful. They're in bright color. You can tell exactly what they are. And some of them, my printer gave up and died. And we just have to live like that. Let's send some fun facts about the cloaker. Maybe that'll help. So they're like subheadings in the monster manual are camouflaged lurker, opportunistic predator, haunting moan. They prefer isolation, but they do sometimes hang out in group. Uh, relatable content. The garistro is 20 feet tall and a prized pet of more powerful things than itself, which leaves me with a conundrum because I feel like if we were cool, he'd make a great cuddler. He's huge and he's furry, come on. This guy has haunting moans, but it did say in the text that they are inaudible to most creatures, which I assume I am most creatures. And we really do value communication in this house, so we're going, we're going to struggle for the cloaker. So where Tiger and I, however, are gonna be lifelong doubles. Is anyone surprised? You shouldn't be, I love him. We're gonna be very happy with our pet owlbear. And then this guy, he looks like a good cuddler. You can tell me I'm wrong. That's fine. I won't believe you. So at what number do we think this stops being fun? Because I'm on number four. We have a Death Knight, we have a Planetar, 
and an ogre. I feel like if I open the monster manual, they're going to tell me Mr. Death Knight isn't nice. Chaotic evil. Okay, but they're like cool undead paladins. They don't need air, food, drink, or sleep. Super low maintenance. And as long as they're evil, they're immortal, which is cool, but also... <sighs> I'd be so bored. I just know they're never home, but a, a loveless marriage can still be a successful marriage. Surely. That's a weird thing for an engaged person to say. Anyway, number five. <laughs> Spectator, which is like a lesser beholder. Quasit and Monitor bask in their glory. So Quasits are like a foot tall. Spectators are beholders, but like not even as powerful as regular beholders, so you don't even have that. And and monodromes are just shitty little robots. I guess I'm killing the beholder? No, actually looking at my other options, I can't do that. I guess I I guess it doesn't feel good, but I think it has to be how it is. Goodbye, Quasit. And I will live a lo I'll live a long and happy life with the monodrome. So we've officially gone through 15 of the 130. I might have to start going faster. Trio number six is kind of a, a rough a rough sitch. Hook horror. Bullywug. Beholder. Who's the lucky man? <laughs> We're marrying a frog. We're marrying a frog. And with the bullywug firmly in lifelong double, I have to choose my snuggle and struggle. Beholder or hook horror? Now, one of them is called hook horror, which is not a phrase I want anywhere near vulnerable pieces of myself. So he has to go away, which does mean, in a way that I don't want to think about at all, the beholder is going to go next to the spectator up in Snuggle, their friend. Trio number seven is all purple for some reason. We have the chul, a bugbear, and a death slab. So here's the thing. When we're talking about rail ring rid, the slab's going in rid. Uh, the cool thing about Slad is the book literally says they have a horrifying cycle of reproduction. That's so cool. They they implant humanoid hosts with eggs, and I don't want I don't want any part of that. You know, oviposition. It's just never really been my thing. But so now we have evil lobster man and bugbear, who's neither bug nor bear. So now we've got to ring the bugbear. Right. But if I ring the bug bear, then I, then I, then I have, then I have to, so the bug bear goes up into rail. Okay. It will be a distant and somber marriage. I'm pretty sure he mostly lives underwater anyway, and I can't breathe underwater, so I probably never even see him. What I'm trying to say is it's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. 35 down, only 101 to go. Every every new trio I draw, I'm like, oh, this one's bad. Like the last one wasn't? Trio number eight. Manticore. Etten, which is like a two-headed giant, and the heads don't like each other, and they argue all the time. And an orc. We're marrying the orc. We'll get that right out of the way. We're marrying the orc. There he is. Hello, sir. I didn't think this through. So Manticore is so scary looking. So scary looking. And an Etten... Honestly, I don't love the looks of much either, but I feel like maybe maybe it'd be fun. Maybe it'd be fun, you know? Two heads are better than one, and between the two of us, we'll have three. So maybe three heads is the, um, the most fun of all. I'd like to express my condolences to the manticore. I'm very sorry. You're simply very scary looking. And I don't, I don't want to think about you like that. All right, number nine. Feeling fine. Feeling like we're going to have a good, healthy marriage. I am no longer feeling a good or healthy marriage. We have a, a marid. A marid? 
I'm going to keep saying names of things wrong. We'll say Merid for now. Uh, Jackalware and an Uh Merids are like genies. They're watery and fishy and kind of up their asses in nobility. Jackalwares are like jackal men. And this is an Atiyach. I don't know what his deal is. And I, looking at him, I actually don't want to. He only has three legs, which works because he also has three horrifying tentacle appendages that I don't want anywhere near me. He looks wet. He looks sticky. He is a, uh, a concerning color, honestly. I'll say it. In this resin game of love, lust, hate, he is firmly down in hate. And I actually feel like now that we're in Merit and Jackalware, it's kind of an easy decision, I'm not gonna lie. I think I'm gonna turn, turn down marriage to wealthy, all-powerful genie man. For what? This guy? Who, it looks like he can't even afford shorts? Obviously not that wealth is the most important thing in a marriage. But if I'm just choosing based on, like, gut vibes, this guy, we might not get along all the time, but he's got me, you know? Especially if he's legally obligated to get me. And you know what? You know what? I don't think, I don't think looks jackal wear here. Would do you like a would do you like a bad job? I don't know if he's doing a bad job. I keep saying he for all the monsters. I just caught myself doing that. And I think it's because all the art, it looks like you know you just assume masculine for them, except for like the drider. And obviously some of them are just horrific abominations. But every time I see a horrific abomination, I call it a he. I don't know. Chimera, Rakshasa, Mind Flayer. Okay. Fuck Mary Kill. Chimera, Rakshasa, Mind Flayer. Well, so chimeras are just sort of this collection of other creatures. They've got like three heads. It's a lion, a ram, and a dragon or a lizard head. And um, they've got wings. They're very cool looking. They're very cool looking. I don't know how well they could maintain a conversation. They can at least understand a language because they're in this compilation of monsters. I just don't, I feel... I feel like they wouldn't be that good of a conversationalist. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. A Rakshasa is a tiger demon. Crazy, crazy powerful tiger demon. Um, and their hands are backwards. Their hands are backwards. Like their palm would be on this side. They're backwards. I can't explain why that gets me as much as it does, that their hands are backwards. Like it shouldn't, right? It shouldn't. The fact that they're like murdery, power-hungry demons should get to me. But look at him. He looks he looks like he could be friendly. He looks like he could be pretty cool. Uh, power is attractive. And then his hands are on backwards. But a mind flayer would literally eat your brain. And possibly also turn you into a mind flayer. That's not good. This this is what I meant when I said this game presents difficult choices. What if I marry the chimera? Thoughts on that? Maybe they're cool. I've consulted the book. They're not cool. They contain demonic cruelty and the worst aspect of all three of their monster heads. But they also have really big territories. And while they understand draconic, don't speak. You know, I'm really just trying to convince myself that it's good and normal that I'm definitely going to say I'm marrying the chimera. I don't want to biblically understand either of these creatures. I feel like the obvious is to say that, well, fucking Rakshasa. But his hands are backwards. I can't stress enough that his hands are backwards. But, like, no way it goes okay with the Mind Flayer. Right? Like, no way. I've decided that I can handle the backward hands in order to spare my human brain or whatever. It's not weird, Haley. It's basically like a furry. Of course he's up in that section. He has backwards hands. His hands are on backwards. Why? And that, of course, means the Mind Flayer goes, bye, 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 bye. I haven't seen them yet, but number 11, I'm going to explain nothing. I'm just going to show them and then make my decision. Lightning round, okay? I spent way too long talking about backwards hands McGee over there. Cloud Giant, Merolith, Red Dragon. We're going to snog the Merolith. We're going to snatch the Cloud Giant, which means, tragically, we're sending away the Red Dragon. Easy, easy. Did you imagine if I just did that for the rest of the video? I was just basically reciting <laughs> monster manual names at you. Entertainment, for sure. Let's see number 12. Hag. Chasm. 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 Solar. 
Is it boring and predictable to marry the solar? Yes, it is. Is he gorgeous? Yes, he is. Would he murder me at any point in the marriage? No, he wouldn't. And if that makes me boring, so be it. Hags are evil, scary looking ladies. This one in particular is a picture of a night hag. They're terrifying. They give you like terrible nightmares and visions. But this guy looks like a mosquito. I like his whole design is that he's a mosquito. That can't feel good. That can't feel good on any part of you, you know? Hmm. I don't I don't think it's very smart to put the hag where I'm putting the hag. But that's just the name of the game, you know? Like definitely I die the next day from some sort of curse she's put upon me. Maybe it's fun. Maybe that's interesting, quirky, a good story. Imagine singing about it in the tavern. Imagine singing about it in the tavern. What a cool song for the tavern. I, I guess I'm just role playing like a bard now with my, my happy matrimony and owl bear pet, but also my storied history. Next trio, we have a quaddle. Quaddle? Quaddle. It's a snake with wings. They're very kind and pleasant and benevolent. Goblin, they're goblins, and a bowgua, like a gorilla demon. They're like big, beefy gorilla demons. Literally nobody look at me, okay? Lit nobody look at me. Nobody look at me. Don't. Stop fucking looking at me. It's because I'm going to marry the goblin, okay? It's because I'm going to marry the goblin because he's cute, and I like goblins, and the wing snake doesn't have any hands, and I feel like hands are a necessary component for the top category. Goblin, does that mean that way down here goes the wing snake that I think looks very cool, that I just said was super kind and benevolent? Yes, yes, and I'm sorry about it, okay? Next, fairy dragon, Zorn, fire elemental. So, so Zorns are these big, messy looking uh, guys with too many limbs, and they look like they'd be really bumpy to touch. Um, not in like a slimy way, but they look like just kind of running your finger like a, like a, like a reptile way. Almost, but like bumpier. You feel me? Um, they're like addicted to eating gems and coins. Feels bad for a marriage scenario unless you really had a specific lifestyle. Fire elemental could be fun in a marriage scenario, but again, specific lifestyle. It would be very difficult. I think in most cases, fairy dragon, they're tiny little dragons with butterfly wings and their breath is like a, like a charm effect. That's cute. Not maybe the best foundation for a marriage situation because like, did they charm me into this? Did I want this? Is this whole thing just an effect of long-term effects of their like charm gas breath? Or have I, do I really want this? Like that's, that would be rough. That'd be rough. That would definitely be rough. I think we would all need to be sympathetic to that and understand that as part of the choice here that we're making. So if we've got if we have the fairy dragon here in loot, that leaves me with root or boot. And um, I just feel like having a fire elemental that close to all of your skin is maybe not a great idea. Once again, my condolences to the fire elementals. I'm sorry, you're just made of fire is the thing. Which does put the Zorn up at the top in root. So, I don't know if I like that, but that's where it's going. We have a tavern song. So think of what rhymes with Zorn. <laughs> oh, I know what rhymes with Zorn. <laughs> obviously, obviously it's going up there. With a name like that, with a rhyme like that, come on. Next trio, we've got a horned devil, a pseudo dragon, and a knoll. My condolences to the pseudo dragon. You're simply a very small little dragon, and it would feel a little weird, even though you were a, an adult and consenting to the situation. I just think maybe I'd rather not have the situation. Marry the knoll. Knolls are so pack oriented. It'd just be like marrying into a really big family where they're all dog people, you know, which of course leaves the horned devil 
for the horn section for the sex the section with all the with all the, the section with all the horns in it you know you know the you know the section there's like a lot of demons in that section next death tyrant minotaur grimlock now i know one of them is literally called death tyrant but the elasticity on this man's skin is terrifying to me the amount that his mouth is open feels like a threat it feels wrong that I'm sitting next to a pseudo dragon, but pseudo dragons are cool. I love pseudo dragons. I just don't want to be entangled with one. I am left with Minotaur and Death Tyrant. And one of them doesn't have hands. One of them doesn't have hands, which I have said pretty much disqualifies him from the top section, even though the water weird is already there. That's different. Okay. She's, she's different to me. Wait, so I'm marrying the Death Tyrant? He's just like a floating skull. He's like a floating skull with one eye in the middle and big sharp teeth. Maybe he'll never be home. And then the, minute, and then the Minotaur goes on the top. And then the Minotaur goes on the top. And it's obviously because he has hands. It's obviously because he has hands and wasn't a um, scary, scary man with his mouth too far open. Um, that's the only reason. That's why. Next. Got a Yuan Ti. A gargoyle and a harpy. Fun fact about this harpy card. This is not the fifth edition art for a harpy. Ah, uh, clearly, if you're looking at it, I think it's the third edition art for a harpy because the fifth edition art for a harpy is so suggestive that I was worried about showing it to people. So instead we get to look at this crazy looking crone who I love. I love her in, in a way that I want to have a conversation with her. I want to have a book club with this woman. I want her to teach me a recipe that she gets so angry at that she starts like swearing and like fanning the oven and just crying. I think we'd have a really good day about that. So I guess I'm marrying the harpy. <laughs> it's solely because she looks like a crazy old crone. I know that harpies aren't like that, but this one looks like she's like that. Which leaves me with gargoyle and... Yuan Ti, this is Yuan Ti Abomination specifically in the picture. This one is made of rocks. This one is made of rocks, and this one is made of snakes. And I think if we're just thinking, if we're thinking of them just as textures, right? If you're just thinking of texture that you'll be touching and it's going to be touching your skin, I think Yuan Ti has to go up here and hang out with the Minotaur. Yes, yes, I'm sticking by that. Starting to migrate into my other sections. We're starting to hit the issue of my whiteboard was not made for this. Next up, we have a salamander. Not, not like the little earth lizards, but like a big fire snake. They call them salamanders. A will-o'-wisp. This is just a ball of light with some intention in it. Uh, and a, a, a quaggoth. 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 I know what I said about hands, and I think mostly I stand by it. However, think of the tavern songs about the will-o'-wisp. Think of it. Are you thinking of it? Honestly, I just want to know what it feels like to touch them. I assume warm. I don't know why. They are explicitly evil. But I could change them. Uh, truly, I have no strong feelings either way on the salamander or the, the quagoth. But again, if we're just breaking them down into textures... I think the salamander would burn me alive. So we'll put the quagoth in getting a ring, getting a diamond ring, baby. I don't know what kind of D&D &D job I have that I can afford a diamond ring. That's like a whole revivify. Honey, did you lose our wedding ring? Uh, no, I came across a poor dead sap on the side of the road, and I thought I'd sacrifice the symbol of our love to save a life. Is that okay? You always do this. You always do this. Next round. Oh, it's a Nothic. <laughs> Nothics are really creepy looking guys, but their backstory is that they're just like wizards who were alone and focused on learning for too long. And it was like really tragic. Oh my God. Uh, so I feel bad for the little guy. I really do. Shield guardian. And a hellhound. Okay. So <laughs> hellhounds can understand language. I'm still going to put him down here. I am going to marry the Nothic. I think he just needs to experience love. And then he turns back into like a regular little wizard. It's like after he experiences love instead of isolation and trauma. It's like a Beauty and the Beast scenario. 
That's so romantic. Oh, I cannot wait to marry the Nothic. And I'll wait till after. No, before he turns back into a little wizard. That's when we'll get the owl bear because the owl bear will also teach them how to love, right? But like not in the romantic sense, just in the like, oh, that's, oh, it's gonna be so cute. It's gonna be so healing for them, you know? After so long, just like locked away, desperately trying to like be enough to to focus on your goals and get what you want, to just have a big owl bear that loves you unconditionally. How healing is that? Anyway, I'm gonna fuck this robot. <laughs> Shield Guardian is basically just a big robot. It's like animated armor, but with language capacity. I literally cannot believe that we're not even halfway done. What am I going to do with the rest of these cards? Where are they going to go? The Kraken and the Hydra and a Vrock. I'm going to start with the Vrock because this thing scares the shit out of me. He's just like long and stick thin and black. I feel like it should be dripping something. He's not dripping, but I feel like at any point he's going to start dripping something. And the fear response does mean that it has to go down at the bottom. Which of course means that I'm left with the Kraken and the Hydra. Let's think this through. Let's talk this through. Kraken is incredibly big, scary underwater monster with a lot of tentacle-like appendages. Frankly, just way too many looking at this image. Uh, I really thought it was going to look more like an octopus. But it's like a fully different monster. That's fine. Uh, the Hydra, of course, from Greek mythology. It's a big monster with a lot of heads. When you cut off the heads, more heads grow. Like, yeah, we, we know what a Hydra is. I guess the thing with the Kraken is it lives underwater. And I can't breathe down there. So any sort of illicit interaction that we had would have to occur underwater, which would not go well for me. It wouldn't go well for me. I can't breathe down there. So I guess the, the Kraken and I are, are matched in holy matrimony. And I guess I just don't see them very often, which is fine. Which puts the Hydra up in the... Okay. I'm just going to start overlapping them. Is that uh, good? Is that a solution? The answer is no. It's not a solution, and eventually it's just going to be a big mess up there. But did you expect it to be anything else? A, a deva? Diva? Let's say diva. Another type of angel. A dracolich? A dracolich? And a black dragon. I don't want to keep being predictable and marrying the angels. So I won't. In this particular game of make-out, murder, and matrimony, the diva is going to, he's going to go to make out. Okay. Is that okay with you? And you know what? A dracolich doesn't have any hands. And not everything that I've, that I, that I've gone into matrimony with has hands. Most of them do. I feel like they would make it easier. And you know what? Almost all of them, almost all of them have skin too. So Mr. Dracolich, you're gonna go down here. I'm so sorry. I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry. Some of these things I really am sorry putting them down there, but a lot of them I'm not sorry. And I don't know, is it like patronizing to apologize? Is it like condescending? I don't want to condescend to the big undead dragon. That would not end well for me. I guess I'm already killing him. Like how much worse can it get? And then the black dragon. Now in the canon stat blocks, in the monster manual, chromatic dragons cannot shapeshift into humanoids the way their metallic counterpoints can. That's nonsense. If I'm marrying this dragon, I will be seeing it as a humanoid. But also sometimes they're a dragon. Whenever is whenever they're comfortable with that. And like this is the magic of this game, right? Black dragon ended up in matrimony, while red dragon ended up in murder. And it's not either of their faults for that. It's just because of the trio they got drawn in. <laughs> like if I just drawn these cards in different orders, this entire board would look different. Number whatever we're on now. What is this? Azur, Bahir, and Nightmare. Well, my apologies to the horse, but um, fuck. I don't want to marry either of these things. This is a big, long, snaky, salamandry lizard guy, and this. I think it's just a man who lives in a forge, but something about him rubs me the wrong way. 
Yeah, I've just checked. He's a man who lives on like the elemental planet of fire and lives inside volcanoes, which is very cool. I don't want to live inside a volcano. So if he goes in married, this is going to have to be another one of those marriages where just like, we really see each other. He's away all the time for work. But then I'd be left with this thing. I don't understand this thing. He's like a big snake. And I just read his part in the monster manual and he was invented by giants to fight dragons. I don't know in what world this thing is winning against a dragon. This guy, I think he's losing every time. And I feel bad for him. I guess I'm going to marry the Azur and we're just never going to see each other. Because I actually can't survive in a volcano. Sir. Sorry, that was like our first big fight. Well, that means the hero has to go on the top. And that's fine. I know these are all hypotheticals. I know that. I know they're all hypotheticals. It still hurts something primal in my soul to put the Bahir up there. What if I have to answer for these crimes someday? I have just counted. I have done 22 trios. And I've just pulled number 23. Which means we will officially be just over halfway. And it is 2 in the morning. So I'm, I haven't looked at the trio yet. I'm going to finish this trio. Okay, I'm going to put them up on the whiteboard. I'm going to go to sleep. Tomorrow, I'll do the second half. For you, it'll be like no time has passed, but I will be in a different outfit. And be cool about it, okay? Don't be weird about it. Be cool about it. It's fine. The lighting might be a little different because it's going to be a different day. But if I keep going, I'm going to fall asleep on camera. Is that going to be good for you? I didn't think so. My energy is also getting... Wild. So expect an energy shift very soon. Expect very soon for me to act slightly more like a person. I'm slightly less like this. Trio number 23. My last trio of the evening. Who do I have? What the fuck? Uh, succubus, which is the lady form of the incubus. Feels weird to say it like that. Succubus is the one that carries children. Incubus is the one that makes you incubate children. Yeah, lol. Yachlul. Yachlul. What is that? I'm like so mad. Now that I've decided I'm going to bed after this one, I'm very angry at this thing for making me read. They're handmaidens of Lalf, which is also worshipped by my beautiful wife, the Drider. Outside of the abyss, they can assume the form of a female drow or a monstrous spider. Then what? Then why would it ever stay in the abyss where it has to look like this? You can't even tell from this picture because of one where my printer is giving up, but it's like a gross yellow and it's dripping and it's got the one eye. It looks really bad. It looks really bad and it looks really bad to touch. The only way this could be okay to touch is if it was like waxy, but it, it doesn't look quite right to be waxy. I think it's just dripping liquid. I haven't even finished talking, haven't even finished talking about all my options yet. And this one, this one, goodbye. I'm sorry, there's not a lot of fondness in my heart for the yachlol. Yachlol. Yeah. Yachlol. We also, <laughs> we also have the crawling claw. This is, this is just a hand. I've done a lot of talking tonight about, <laughs> about things that don't have hands. And he heard, he heard the call. He knows me. He understands me. And what I need and how to support me in, in difficult times. I love this thing. And I feel like he loves me. And the thing about the succubus is I sent her guy down in the murder pit. Because that's where he would have sent me, given the chance. But I can't put her in the murder pit because I put the yachalal in there. I guess we give her a chance to do what she's best at. And if I make it out alive, think of the tavern song. Think of the bragging rights. I understand that's not a very healthy way to look at intimate partners. However, she's literally a sex demon. So this hand and I are getting married. And we're going to be happy together. And you don't have to understand us or what we've gone through. Because we understand us. 
And that's all we need. All right. So this is the state of the board. It's a big chaos mess, and we are literally only halfway done. I wish, I wish I knew what to do about that, but I think tomorrow when I keep going, I will literally just continue sticking them on top of each other with magnets. So, see you then. Whoops, it's been a week. Yeah, I'll record again tomorrow. Okay. So I've had some time between the first half of this and now to the second half. Uh, I've looked through the footage. You know what? No one can say that I wasn't in the moment, that I wasn't present, that I wasn't fully bought into <laughs> the concept. Because I was. As you can see behind me, I did not choose to go with the strategy of just continue to sticker everything all over it. I instead, I made some lovely little stacks. This does mean that I'm occasionally going to have to stop what I'm doing to restack <laughs> what I add to it. That's okay. I'm willing to do that. Um, also, in making these stacks, I had to come face to face with all of my choices. All, all of them. So, I do stand by the crawling claw. I do. I will stand by him at the altar. <laughs> And also for the rest of our life. Excellent news. I am recording in the middle of the night again. So, energy maintained. Gotta say. And I'd love to sit and talk to you about all my life updates in the past week, but uh, we're exactly halfway through something. I don't know if I'm actually emotionally prepared to keep playing this game, but um, I am playing it again. So, what do we got? Boy, oh boy, we are. <laughs> right back in it. Ready, boys? We got a doppelganger a centaur, and an imp. And once again, we get to play the, the, and once again, we get to do the really fun thing where I just stop and read for a moment. I actually am glad that I took the time to look this guy up because it specifically says in the book that they're bad at raising children or that they won't do it. <laughs> they just specifically assume like male bodies and seduce young women and then leave. That's fucked up. That's, that's fucked up. Kill, kill, death. Hmm, there's still an imp in the pile. There's still an imp in the pile. I forgot about the imp in the pile. Imps are tiny little demons. They're like the, the, like the rats of hell. Which is kind of cool. Not a great marriage prospect, though. I have to say. I feel like, um, yeah. Yeah. Haley, doesn't that mean that you're putting an imp up in the top? It does. It does mean that. It does mean that. Maybe it'd be fun. We don't know. Next. I want to get through these so fast. I want to be good at this game. Can you win Fuck, Mary Kill? Because I'm going to win it. Oh, I'm going to lose it. I'm, ah. <laughs> Chain Devil. Cobalt. Oni. So the thing about these guys is that they're like um, monsters that eat children. And also, one of these killed one of my favorite characters in all of media. Ever. Justice for Molly Mock. Death be upon ye. <laughs> no. I'm gonna marry. I'm. I'm. I'm gonna marry the Cobalt. I'm gonna marry the Cobalt. And I'm gonna marry the Cobalt because I feel like he probably has a great personality. I feel like he could be a, a provider. I feel like he could complete me, and I. I, I guess that means. The other, the, the other one has, oh, oh no, I guess, that, I guess that means. Is that ASMR? Is your brain tingling? You are the Nutty Buddy box. And I am but a stack of little monster cards. I grabbed too many. What's with what is with all the devil? This one. So this is an ice devil, and he looks like a grasshopper. Tell me that's not a poorly painted grasshopper. Lie to me. So we've got the ice devil, a storm giant, and a mesoloth. What the fuck is a mesoloth? 
Ah, he's a type of fickle fiend that inhabits a bunch of planes I can't pronounce. That's pretty good. <gasps> Embodiments of avarice. Okay. They're human-sized? It's human-sized? No. That, this is two feet tall. This is two feet tall. That's not... Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Oh, and they exhale toxic fumes, which is so exciting. I'd love to say that that means Mr. Mezaloth goes in the pit. Um, but I cannot, in good conscience, have this grasshopper around. He's not a grasshopper. He's a devil, and he's probably made of ice. But my printer is really bad sometimes. But I don't care because his face is like a little praying mantis. And that's gross. That's gross. I don't... That's gross. Okay. Um, Mezaloth or Storm Giant? Who are we spending the rest of our lives with? I don't think husband material exhales toxic fumes all the time. That feels, you know, we got to avoid toxicity in our relationships. It's not good for us. We're breaking cycles here. You know, maybe toxicity can be fun for like, like an hour once. And then this 20 foot tall gentleman can accidentally crush me someday because he forgot I was there. And listen, it happens. Next, I literally already know we're going with this. We have Unicorn, Helmed Horror, and Magman. I already got this. I, I literally, it's fine. You know, sometimes the Nutty Buddy box really gives you a break. Really just goes, hey, I got you on this one. The Magman is in the pit. He will die at my hands. This thing is now my wife. We love unicorns here. Did you know unicorns would be a warlock patron in D&D? &D? If we're married... I would never be a warlock, but our kids and the helm the helm horror is going to the penthouse. Okay, and I hope he has a great time. Easy, easy, feels good. Next, I literally cannot believe there's so many of these left. Oh, they're all pink. Uh, Slatty, we already did the death slad. He's of course down in the pit where he belongs, uh, but this is just another form of slad. Uh, a periton, periton, which appears to be a bird having a really weird day, and a pegasus, which is, of course, a bird having the best day of its life. We have previously discussed the mating habits of the, the slatty, of the slads, and it's, no, it's not different for the ones that don't have death in the name. And I don't have a worse option on the table, so. In the pit. I guess I marry the, pe the pegasus? I'll, ma I'll marry a pegasus. I, I would marry a pegasus if they offered. I'm going to put the periton up on the top, but then I am also going to look up what this is. Oh, it feeds on humans. That's so exciting. I don't know why so many monsters in this book actually specify what their reproductive cycle is like. It's, it feels like a weird thing to put in your monster book. It's very helpful for this exercise specifically, but I don't know when else it comes up. Um, but the, the per periton, periton needs a freshly killed humanoid in order to reproduce, it needs like the heart of a human. So I will just be very careful. I'll be very careful if the breastplate stays on during activities with the <laughs> parents. <laughs> Next. Oh shit, the parent doesn't have hands. I've ruined my pattern. This is a, this is a fun little grouping. A, 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 a lamia, lamia, a gold dragon, and a specter which is a different than a ghost because it is purple. So the more you know. Okay, I'm literally reading the page for a specter and it's just a ghost. It's just a, it's a mad ghost, but I'm pretty sure all d, &D ghosts are mad. So what the fuck happened to this guy? Gold dragons are uh, big, big dragons who are nice, and benevolent, and they can swim. They're amphibious. That's a fun fact I just know about gold dragons. You can, ha you can have that one for free. And a Lamia. I'm going to say Lamia. And you can all let me know if I'm wrong. Uh, one of their, like, subheaders is Tyrants of Pleasure. So it's looking good so far. And they seek out adventurers with pure hearts in order to corrupt them. Which is, objectively speaking, kind of hot. I feel like this is another kind of kind of easy one from the box. Thank you, box. Lamia goes up in the penthouse. Obs, everybody say hello to my cool new spouse who's going to go hang out with the, the unicorn and the pegasus. I feel like we're getting a good gang together. 
here for this one. And then the man who died and was literally too angry to just become a regular ghost is going to go in the pit. It's going to go in the pit. We don't need that energy here. It's all about knowing your limits and boundaries in the relationship, I think, is what we're – I think that's too many. Okay. Okay. Demi Lich. Now, he's just a skull. He's just a floating skull. He's a very powerful floating skull. Okay, I'm not denying that. This is just a skull. Thrycreen. Now, I did banish a man to the pit earlier for looking like a praying mantis. But these guys look like grasshoppers in ways that I can get behind. Grass dragon. Essentially, for this activity, the exact same as a gold dragon to me. I don't know if he can swim, though. I think he can dig. I am unfortunately going to default back to my... It doesn't have hands, so there's really only one place it belongs. And put the demi lich in the pit. I'm so sorry, sir. I'm so sorry, sir. My condolences. I don't know at what point I stopped saying like the actual categories they're going in and just referring to the entire murder section as the pit. But it feels right. We're going to marry the brass dragon. Obviously, I feel like any of the metallic dragons are prime spouse material, okay? Because they can turn into humanoids, first off, if that's something you're concerned about. Even if they couldn't, they put together hordes. They're professionals at what they do. I bet they all can cook. That's not from the source material. It's just something that I believe in my heart, which means the the Thrycreen is going up there. Sure, sure. I'm not particularly offended by that. That's what you want to say, right, about hypothetical partners, that you're not instantly physically offended by the idea. <laughs> That's just how root loot boot be, baby. You can't be enthusiastic about every single choice. Sometimes you're just conceding. Oh, Jesus Christ. Speaking of concession, Treant, that's just a big tree. Homunculus. I have the horrifying feeling that if I look him up in the book, they're going to try and tell me it's person sized. Fomorian, which are explicitly so bad to be around. First, I have to figure out if that thing is person sized. I gotta know. It's not person sized, it's tiny. Okay. It is like entirely bound to its creator and shares a brain with it. So that's that. Um, I don't know if I love. I think knowing that I can't marry the homunculus. So we'll, we'll have to move him away from that category. And I can only in good faith send the Fomorian to the pit. So then in some sort of process of elimination math problem, I'm, I'm going to marry the tree. And with murder and matrimony crossed off the list, that leaves me with make out with a homunculus. Okay, that could be, it could be worse. Could it be? It's made out of like clay and is specified to be squirrel size. That's too small. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We've already made the choice. So I think we have reached the point where I am sitting here thinking to myself, I should have just played Smasher Pants, <laughs> which is how you know it's getting dire. Oh no! <laughs> this is another easy one. This is another <laughs> flumps. Oh my darling, my darling flumps. They're so cute. They're so precious to me. And his friends in this trio are an Aaron, yes, a uh, very pretty, scary lady demons, and a flame scum. <laughs> Now, Mr. Flame Skull, I'm so sorry to send you down to the pit, but you should have thought about that before you decided not to have hands. The Erin, yes, of course, fast-tracked up into the penthouse. Fast-tracked. She's like a CR-18. Are you kidding? I didn't look that up. If I got it wrong, don't tell me if I got it right. Of course I did. <laughs> and my dearest, my darlingest flump, we're going to live a long and happy life together. You and me and the crawling claw. <laughs> And the unicorn and the Pegasus. A <laughs> couple of dragons. <laughs> Looking at it, there's actually a lot of dragons in the matrimony section. There's only one that isn't, and it's the red dragon in the pit. I don't remember why he's down there. And all of the other ones are in the middle, but I'm, sh I'm sure I had a good reason at the time. Guys, the box is getting emptier. The box is getting emptier. We're getting there. <laughs> is this fun for you? 
Is this entertaining to watch? You want to see pure blood? Snake lady. Andrew Sphinx. Gorgeous. Gorgeous? <laughs> and an intellect about her. Who could say no to that cute little brain on legs? Who could, who could possibly, who could say no to him? He's in the pit. The intellect of our is in the pit, which leaves me with, you want to see pure blood and androsphinx? I was already pretty sure I knew where these two were going to end up. And then I checked the book. And it says the androsphinx has a gruff exterior and underneath all of that, a noble heart of gold. You kidding? Yes, of course I'll marry you. That's a, that's a proposal. Which leaves this spooky lady to go up in the penthouse. And, and you know what? Welcome. Yeah, hello. Does that even feel like they're learning too much about me? Because if so, what did you think was going to happen here? Dwarger. Invisible stalker. Shadow dragon. I'd actually love to talk about this image. You're all welcome to, to look at it up close at home. It's on page 192 of your personal copy of the fifth edition of the Dungeons and Dragons Monster Manual, or you could just Google Invisible Stalker 5e and you'll see it in all its beautiful color. This image is horny. It is, and I don't, it doesn't have to be. Like, obviously she's dying. For sure, this the woman in here is dying, definitely. I don't think she's having a good time. I don't think either of the beings in this picture are necessarily into it, but something about this image, I know the person who drew it was like a little too into it. You can tell, you can tell. Tell me you can't tell. Lie to me. It's a, It oozes, it oozes off of the page. And it, make, it makes me uncomfortable. It makes me uncomfortable. Um, but you can't deny it. You can't deny it. You can't deny me. It's just true. I don't know if that affects my choices here. I just had to stop and talk about it because I honestly had never seen this monster before I started doing this thing. And then I saw this monster and I was like, um, have we all just been ignoring the weird energies coming off of this page in the monster manual for year? When did, when did 5e come out? Like 2012? or something? We've all been ignoring it since then? How? We just have a, a regular dwarver over here, drawn by somebody who knew how to just do their job, and like across from them, in another cubicle. You know how like freelance artists do. Was, was the guy working on this, just like lovingly for weeks, painstakingly going over the composition, getting the weird energies <laughs> just right. Murder the dwarver, matrimony the shadow dragon, Make out with the invisible stalker. I'm sorry. I have to marry the dragon, okay? It, it makes sense. It makes sense that you want to marry all the D&D dragons. I, w I will defend that point. They're old. They're accomplished. They have a lot of possessions. They will take care of you. They have a lair. They have a lair. That man owns his own house. What about your man? Hmm? Hmm? Your dwarf girl? I don't think so. I didn't think so. <laughs> I thought we were getting there, but there's still so many left. I'm taking a brief intermission to stack all these up, but for you guys, it's gonna happen so fast. Ready, ba ba ba, bam! See what did I tell you? I think what I'm learning through this whole thing is there's simply too many monsters in the handbook, and you can't care about all of them. Mummy, a free tea, ghost. So two of these are dead, and the other one is evil. I think yes, he's an evil genie, and is a slaver. Um, so, look, this is gonna make for a wild rest of the round, but he has to go to the pit. And now that we've taken care of struggle, that leaves us with ghost and mummy, or snuggle and lifelong double. Mm. I'm gonna fuck the ghost. I'm gonna fuck the ghost. I'm not, like, proud of myself about it, but I think it's what has to happen. I'm gonna marry the mummy, but... We will not talk very often, and I will have a lot of fr friends. I will have an expansive 
support network outside of my marriage so that I can live a good and fulfilling life that does not have anything to do with the fact that my spouse is decaying in front of me. Next, Empyrean, Dryad, Vampire Spawn. Okay, this is the perfect time to talk to you all about how much I hate the Empyrean. I literally thought when I saw the like art for this guy that he was supposed to be some sort of statue or like made out of clay, some kind of construct. He's a celestial. He just looks like that. Ooh, it makes me mad. I mm. Under normal circumstances, I'd say all of that doesn't necessarily mean that this thing should die. But in this one, there he goes right into the pit. Oh, no. Which leaves us with these two absolute queens. I'm going to marry the dryad. I'm going to marry the dryad. I think she knows a lot of secrets that I don't know and a lot of secrets that you can't just, like, ask. You know, I have to slowly kind of tease them out over years. And marriage is a great excuse to do that. <laughs> Am I going to be a vampire at the end of this? No. Because vampire spawns can't turn you into a vampire. Am I going to be vampire food at the end of this? Maybe. Right up to the penthouse she goes. Next, we got Sohuigan, Air Elemental, Merfolk. So Sohuigan and Merfolk are both amphibious water people. Uh, merfolks have the fish tails and Sahuagin have legs. So that's, I think, the main difference. Sahuagin are racist against sea elves, I think. And, and an air elemental is a tornado. That's just a tornado. I do think that in most rounds, air elemental would go up to the penthouse because it's again, it's thinking of the stories, it's thinking of the tavern songs. But in this one, I'm gonna send him to the pit, which feels bad, but I, it's where he has to go. And then we're gonna marry the merfolk, okay, because I like her cool hair. We're gonna have an awkward afternoon with the Sahuagin. I feel like it'd be easier. They have legs. Next. I hope you're still playing along at home. If you're not playing along at home, how did you even make it this far? Yeti, Werebear, and Bone Naga. My, my absolute condolences to the Bone Naga, but you are just a snake made out of bones and you don't got any hands. To the pit, to the pit you go. Between Yeti and Werebear, only one of these can turn into like a regular person who can have conversations with you and share their feelings and share a life and be domestic and it's not the yeti <laughs> i do think a werebear would make a good spouse like i i do just think that that's this isn't even for the game i do just think that werebear next to the dryad feels right um this i don't feel good about in my soul i feel this feels like a crime a little bit and in case you're wondering, what language does a Yeti speak that allows them to fit in this category? Yeti. They speak Yeti. And their intelligence is an eight, which is higher than some player characters I've had. But it still feels incorrect. But it doesn't matter, because the choice has already been made. Next. And for this round, we have a Pixie, a Kenku, he fell down, and a Lizard Folk. Now, none of these are necessarily bad matrimony options which is kind of weird okay i think i have to pick who's going in forever pass first for this one it's gonna be the kenku it's gonna be the kenku who's gonna go into forever pass and i love kenku i love kenku okay but kenku are mimics right they can only say things they've already heard and i'd hate to be in a situation in either of these categories where the Kenku wants to say something that they don't quite have the words for. I feel like that this is a huge opportunity for like sitcom level misunderstandings. And I hate those plot lines. I will not be a part of one. And this adorable little bird will not make me. Like I'm literally envisioning the like laugh track, but I'm getting mad. I'm getting mad about it in real life. This is those midnight recording vibes, you know? I was just at like noon. I would not get mad about the idea of a Kenku and I not having 
complete communication ability. I'm mad about it. I'm gonna marry the pixie. I love her little face. I love her little, love her little, love, I love her little butterfly wings. That was a good sentence, A plus. Lizard folk go up to the penthouse with his cool mohawk and his big club. Chablamo, next. Oh, Jesus, oh, gee, oh, Jesus. Oh, oh. The mud method. He's a creepy little guy who's made of mud. A grill. That's a brain with a beak and some spindly little tentacles. That's disgusting. And a blight. This is this is maybe the worst one yet. Uh, let's okay. So which one is the most viscerally uncomfortable? Because I think that's the one that has to go in the in the pit shortly. I think it has to be the growl. I think it has to be the growl. I looking at this thing is so upsetting. <laughs> like imagine touching it. No, 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 no. I will, I'll, I'll stomp on him with a big, big boot and he will die. And I will go, oh no. And I'll feel gross that even part of my boot touched it and his big freaky beak. Ah, I, I guess I'm gonna marry the blight. Sure. And then the man, and then the man made of mud. And then the man. We're gonna pretend he's not up there, okay? You and me, we can do that together, okay? Okay, so I haven't been counting, but it really feels like we're in the home stretch, doesn't it? It doesn't feel like we should be. We should be. If we're not, we deserve to be. Dragon turtle, white, vampire. Well, one of them doesn't have hands. I just imagined a dragon turtle, but with human hands. I don't recommend. What is the difference between a white and a vampire, like functionally? So whites still have all their memories from them when they were alive, and they just kind of like feed off of life essence, and they're afraid of sunlight. Which, forgive me if I'm wrong, isn't that also everything that's true about a vampire? Right? Are these just the same guy? Are these literally just like the same guy, except one of them is more famous than the other one? That can't be right. Marry the vampire, I guess. There is an entire D&D adventure about, like, why you shouldn't want to marry a vampire, but what if I could change him? <laughs> and I don't know what this guy's deal is, but I'm going to find out. <laughs> white to the penthouse. White to the penthouse. I don't know. That was like a, like a clean up on aisle six kind of voice. I don't know what that was. Ah! <laughs> not looking good it's not looking good boys and for this round we have a cambion a banshee and a bone devil the thing about this picture of a banshee is it's definitely made worse by how my my printer did it dirty it doesn't look that much better when you see it how it was intended to be seen and like no extra reading done sight unseen uh banshee's gonna be a forever pass from me which does then leave us with a, a cambion which is a fiend, it's like half human, half um, incubus, which is, we did put him down here, and, and a bone devil. So, I guess we marry the Cambion. I feel like we have a better shot at a stable home life with the Cambion, and then the bone devil. I mean, it's in the name, right? <laughs> bone? No, 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 next round. We have a Sprite. We have a lich, and we have a Medusa. The thing that's actually really exciting about this round is I can just send the lich right to hell. I don't have to consider all my other options. I don't have to keep him on as like the lesser of three evils. He can go right to hell, which is so exciting because I don't like him. And given full agency, that, that's where I would have put him. Sprite and Medusa. Here's the thing, here's the thing, okay? Do you wanna hear the thing? Here it is. Sprite's gonna go in the penthouse. Okay, that's, hear me out. I just feel like if she had a good, communicative, long-lasting relationship, I don't think she'd turn me to stone. I think we'd figure it out. We're gonna marry the Medusa. We're gonna marry the Medusa. Guess who's here to judge me for all my crimes? Yeah, it's you. <laughs> now, I can't keep the monster manual in my lap when he's here. 
So I guess we just ask Hermes for all the monster facts? Do you know them? Tell me about Medusa's. I think there's literally like two rounds left. Here's the round. We got a drow, we have a troll, we have a wraith. So a drow these days is like an entire player character race. Like a bunch of people play drow and they're hot. Drow, drow are hot. Okay, I'll say it. You know what's not hot? Either of these things. But I'm gonna put the troll in the pit. The troll's gonna live in the pit. But we're gonna fuck a wraith. <laughs> you already know I was marrying a drow. You know I'm marrying a drow. Yes, I'm marrying a drow. Don't drow live like underground too? No sun exposure? That's so good for the skin. I am going to lose my mind. This is not a drill. I reached into the box to pull out my last set of three. And if you'll recall from the very beginning, I was supposed to have 136 D&D &D monsters, okay? That was 45 groups of three plus one. So the very last one I could put in whatever category I felt fit so I could have a moment of freedom, of free will, a minute of agency. I pulled out three and the box is empty. I have been betrayed by the cosmos itself. I talked so much smack about Smasher Pass and about the need for agency when playing silly little fuck games that they took away the one moment I had built in for myself. I don't know what monster is missing. I will never know what monster is missing. There's no way to know. I'm not gonna read through the whole list. I'm not gonna cross reference to the, the master list I didn't make. I simply must lie in the bed that I've made for myself and do my last round. My, my last round of D&D 5e monster manual. Root, loot, and boot. <laughs> what am I even looking at? Skeleton, Kuatoa, Glabrazu. What is that? Who is this? Whose man is that? It's not mine. Not mine. I do not. I do not accept this as my own man. I don't know him. I don't want to know him. Just, just for having the audacity to be a thing I don't know and looks like this on my last round after the tragedy that has just befallen me. He's going in the pit. He's going in the pit. And you know what? You know what? I'm gonna marry a little fish man. I'm gonna marry this little follower of Blipsopulp. Yeah, I just know that. I just know the name of a little fish man's god. It's the top of my head. Why wouldn't I, huh? You're doubting me? After all this, you're doubting me. Now? And that means that me and this skeleton are, are, are gonna, he's, uh, I can't even, he's going to the penthouse. He's going up to the top, okay? And me and this skeleton, is that what you wanted? Are you happy? And that's that. That is 135. Monsters from the Dungeons of Dragons, 5th edition, Monster Manual. Sorted arbitrarily into three categories for a very, very long time. Certainly this video is over an hour long. And you, sa you, sat, through all you sat through all of that. I'm proud of you. And I cannot believe that you sat with me through all of that. Thank you. Thank you. I would love to talk about what we learned today. I don't, I don't know what I learned today. Something about karmic justice, perhaps. I learned I want to marry a dragon, I guess. I learned that thumbs are very important. I learned that sometimes you can imagine the texture of a fake thing so hard that it makes your real body feel bad. That's a cool thing I learned. I learned that there's a reason 
that people like Brian David Gilbert and Mike's Mike use entire walls for things like this instead of a single whiteboard easel. Will that stop me from doing something exactly like this again in the future? No. No, it won't. Because as much as I talk about the things that I learned here today, what I really want to say is I've never learned anything in my life. And I'm not starting. Thank you so much for joining me for this entire adventure, and thank you for sticking it out to the end. If you want to see more content from me, you can subscribe to this YouTube channel, Haley Whipjack. You can find me on TikTok at Whipjack, and you can find me on Twitter at Whipped Jack, W-H-I-P-P-E-D Jack. I'm so sorry. <laughs>